So let's center the pivot on this guy now that it's finished. Alright, so into the uh, hierarchy tab, effect pivot only center object, and then turn it off. Alright, let's unhide the everything else, so exit isolation mode, right click, unhide all. Alright, just gonna hit Z. Alright, so we're gonna have to move it over obviously into place, so let's do that in the front view. Alright, just gonna move and I'm just gonna drag it over until it touches the uh, outside of our trigger housing. Alright, just like that. Okay, and let's just make sure all this stuff is named and organized uh, before we move on. Okay, so I'm just going to select the first uh, trigger housing piece and just copy the name off of it. Alright, control C and paste it onto our new one. Control V, and I'm just going to add it to. Okay, and let's do the same with the faceplate. Alright, I'm just going to copy the name off the first side and paste it onto this side. And add it to. Alright, so. Might as well make sure our pivot points are centered as well. Alright, before we do that though, I'm just going to add the smooth modifier to the rest of this stuff. Alright, just going to select the first faceplate and just copy it off of the uh, modifier stack. So right click and copy. Alright, we'll just paste it onto each of these guys. Right, paste. And this one. Paste. Alright, we already added to this. Alright, so just like that, everything's smoothed out and uh, organized. Alright, and put our gray shader on. Okay, so it's coming along slowly. Um, this is definitely the most time consuming uh, part of this entire thing, I think. Alright, but we're getting there. So, with that all done, let's do a save. Alright, and one more thing we could do before we actually add the screws. Uh, I'm just going to select the two trigger housing pieces and we'll uh, go into isolation mode. Hold Q. Alright, it's not really necessary in our case, but I'll just show you just for the sake. Alright, if you look in the screw holes here, you can see that the screw holes don't match up. Alright, so you can see right inside. Alright, in our case it doesn't really matter because we're going to shove a screw in there and you won't see that, but uh, just in case you ever run into a problem where you need to, uh, you know, make those match up. I'll just uh, do this really quick. Alright, so I'll select this side here. Okay, and we'll drop down into Edit Poly. And go to Border. Alright, I'm just going to go into Wireframe F3. Alright, I'm just going to go along and select the borders on the inside of the screw holes. Hold in Control. Alright, all five of those guys, we won't do the safety. Alright, just like that, and I'm going to hit cap, just to fill in the ends, and then I'll control click polygon. Alright, just to convert to a polygon selection. Alright, and then we'll hit shrink one time. Alright, so we're just left with the inside cap piece. Selected. And then let's jump into the left view, and just go into wireframe F3. I'm just going to zoom in here. I could also hit F2. Alright, and let's just inset those polygons. Okay, and we'll just back this off until it matches the hole on the other side. Alright, so it looks like 0.6 should be good. I'll hit OK. Alright, and if you look in here, all we have to do now is just hit delete and get rid of them. Alright, and you can see if I zoom in here, they all match up now. Alright, nice and neat. Alright, so yeah, that might come in handy, uh, you know, just for future reference. Alright, so let's exit Polygon, and uh, I think this piece is done now, finally, so let's uh, do one more save. Alright, so before we move on and do the screws, let's just take one more look at the reference and uh, make sure we didn't forget anything. Alright, uh, and I think I did. You can see this guy right here. I uh, forgot about that, so let's just do that quick. Alright, sorry about that. I'm just going to right click and hide all. Okay, and I think for this I'll just do it in the plate piece. Alright, so let's select that. I'm just going to put the blue on it so we can tell them apart. And we'll go into isolation mode. Alt Q. Alright, so let's zoom in on this guy here. And it shouldn't be just a screw hole like that. I'm just going to have this up in the corner so I can see it. Alright, so I think we'll just quickly fix this. Okay, so let's go into the modify panel. Back into edit poly. To border. Alright, just grab the inside of this hole. And we'll just control click uh, polygon. Alright, and let's just hit grow one time. Alright, just so we have the uh, polys on the inside of the hole, and let's just hit delete and get rid of them. Alright, and I'm just going to go back to border, and just select this. Alright, so let's go up to move. Alright, I'm just going to drag it in a bit. So hold down shift and just drag in on the X to clone the edge. 
It doesn't look like on the picture it's very deep, so I'm just going to go in a bit like that. Okay. And let's cap it. So I'm just going to hit cap. Alright, just to fill it in. And we're going to have to make it a bit bigger, so let's go to vertex and just select all the verts around it. Okay, and we'll do this in left view. Alright, so let's go to scale again and just scale these verts up on the triangle. Alright, just to make it a bit bigger. Alright, I might do maybe uh, 175 on the XYZ down at the bottom there. Alright, and let's straighten it out in the front view. It's going to be sticking out again. Alright, so I'm just going to move, and I'm just going to move them in just so it's flush with the surface again, just like we did before. Okay, just like that. Alright, and let's uh, go to Polygon and select the uh, inside Polygon there. And uh, we might as well chamfer the edges down here. So let's do that first, actually. I'm just going to go to Edge and just drag a selection around all the edges. Okay, and we'll deselect these guys and go into the front view. Into Wireframe F3 and just deselect the guys on the inside of the hole. All right, just those guys. And let's just chamfer it down a bit. Alright, so chamfer. And we'll go pretty small on this. Doesn't have to be much. Maybe uh, 0 0.05 and OK. Alright, just like that. Alright, and there has this little screw pin thing coming through the inside there, so we could uh, leave it without a hole, but maybe I'll do the hole just in case we need it. Alright, so let's uh, select that polygon again. Go back into the left view. Alright, I'm just going to uh, exit isolation mode here, just so I can see the back uh, piece there. Alright, and we'll just inset that polygon. Alright, and I'm just going to go up. Alright, I'm just going to match the inside hole. Alright, so maybe 2.1 or so, and OK. Alright, just like that, and we'll hit delete. Alright, yeah, we can exit polygon. Alright, so just like that. Okay. And if you look in here, it's obviously not going to match the back hole there. This one uh, is bigger. Alright, but uh, I think I'll just leave it, just because, you know, this piece has taken an awful long time, so we should move on. Alright, but if you want to uh, make those match, you could. Again, you're probably not ever going to see it, so it doesn't really matter. Alright, so I think that'll finally do it for those pieces. Just make sure everything's okay. Alright, so let's move on and do the screws. Um, I'm just going to save first now that that's done. Alright, so for the screws, I'm just going to take another look here. Alright, it looks like they're just slotted to, uh, like the ones we made for the uh, upper band pieces. Alright, so I think we can probably steal those uh, off of there and clone them for down here. Save some time. Alright, so let's go up here to the band. Alright, just select the screw. Alright, I'm just going to hold down shift, go to move, and just drag a copy over here on the Y. Alright, and uh, I'll just change the name here. Just call it trigger housing screw. Alright, and we'll do a copy. And OK. Alright, and it's facing in the wrong direction. So let's go into the top view. Alright, just hit Z. Alright, so we want to spin it around, so let's uh, go to rotate. And again, I just have my angle snaps turned on here, and we'll just rotate this 180. Like that. OK, and I'm, I don't think we really need all these threads on here either, so let's get rid of those just to uh, lower the count a bit. Alright, so let's drop down into Edit Poly. And just go to Edge. Alright, I'm just going to drag a selection through the edges here. Just the threads, and we won't do the ends. And let's loop. And Control Backspace. Alright, to remove them. And we can exit Edge. Alright, so just like that. There's really no reason to have all those extra polys on it if you're not going to see it at all. Alright, so back into the left view. Alright, let's move it down into place. We're going to have to scale it down. Don't want to do that. Just going to uh, jump in the perspective view here and just hide everything but the screw in the faceplate for now. Okay, so isolation mode, all Q. Back into the uh, right view. Just going to hit F3. Alright, so let's select the screw. 
and try to line it up with the hole evenly if I can. Alright, like that, and let's scale it down. So it's a bit closer to the size we want. Just going to go a little bigger than that inside piece of that hole. Okay, let's get it into position so we can actually judge better. Right, so back into perspective, just going to zoom in here and just pull it over on the X. Might do it just like that. Might scale down teeny bit more. Alright, so I'm just going to stick it in there. Pretty much like that, okay? And let's adjust the length, so I'm going to exit isolation mode one more time. And we'll go into the front view for this. Okay, so let's go to back to uh, edit poly in the rollout. Go to vertex, grab the uh, end, and just move it over. And to the other side, we'll look in that perspective here so we can judge. Alright, just hit Z. Alright, so we'll just pull it out the other side a bit. Alright, just so you can see it sticking out there. Alright, just like that. That should be fine, I think. Okay. the uh, faceplate piece and uh, go into x-ray, alt x, and I'm going to select the housing piece and, and go into x-ray, alt x, All right, just so I can see the inside of the hole here. Okay, so I think that should be fine. All right, so let's uh, select these guys again, alt x, select our faceplate, alt x. All right, so that's fine for that guy. All right, let's center the pivot on it. Arc tab, effect pivot only, center object, turn it off. Alright, we'll just clone it around a couple times. Alright, so let's go back into the uh, right view. Our blueprint's hiding our view. Alright, so let's uh, select the faceplate and the screw. Go back into the right view. Alt Q. Alright, so we can see what we're doing. Alright, so let's just grab the screw and just hold down Shift and we'll just drag a copy over for each of the holes. Alright, and copy and OK. Just make sure it's kind of centered in our hole. All right, looks pretty good, and we can also give it a little bit of random rotation, All right, just so they don't match up exactly. Okay. And back to move, and we'll just shift drag one down here. Hit OK. Center it. All right, just give it a little spin. All right, and one more. Spin it a little bit. Okay, so just like that. Alright, we just have the one more up here, so let's uh, go back to move, and I'm just going to shift drag a copy of the screw up there where that hole is. Alright, do copy and OK. All right, let's zoom in here. Alright, so on the reference picture, uh, it doesn't really look like a screw, it almost looks like just a little pin or something in there. Okay, so I think what we'll do for this guy is just uh, use our uh, shaft of our screw and we'll have to delete the head. All right, so let's just pull it over so we can see it. All right, I'm going to go back into uh, Edit Poly. All right, to Polygon. All right, I'm just going to grab the whole head of it and uh, hold Alt and deselect the shaft. All right, and we'll just delete that with Delete. Okay, and let's go to Border and just grab this open border and cap it. All right, and control click uh, edge. I'm just going to take a look at the other end just to make sure we kind of match them. All right, so we'll do a chamfer. And go up a bit, maybe 0.1, hit apply, and lower this down a little bit. All right, maybe 0.02, and OK. All right, we can exit edge. All right, so we'll just do this because it's a little quicker. All right, so I'm just going to move it in. Right, just leave it sticking out a bit. Okay, and let's exit isolation mode again and check out the other side. I'm just gonna hit Z. Alright, 
so it's coming up a little short on this side. Alright, so let's go to Vertex and just grab these verts. Alright, we'll just pull them out just so they're just sticking out again on this side. Alright, make sure everything's centered. Let's move it over a little bit. Alright, so just like that. So we're still going to have to add the safety, but let's do a save. Okay, so let's get the safety in there too, just so we don't forget about it. Alright, I'm going to go back out into the right view, and just uh, right-click on right, and change the view back to left. Alright, so we can actually see something. Alright, we'll go down here to the safety hole, and I think I'll just use a, a cylinder for this. Alright, so let's go back to the create panel, standard primitives, to cylinder. And we'll just drag one out here. It's about the size of that hole. Right, give it a bit of height. Right, let's just try to center it here. Alright, now let's go into the modified panel. I'm just going to up the sides just so it's uh, fairly smooth. Alright, maybe we'll do 40 or so. No, not 10, 40. Alright, and just position it so it's kind of sitting in there properly. Alright, I'm just going to go into wireframe F3 and just lower the radius down to make it match the inside of the hole. Alright, so maybe 2.55, that should be fine. Okay, and let's also ditch the uh, height segments by right clicking the spinner. Alright, and let's position it. Alright, so we'll move it in. Hit Z. Alright, so I'm just going to make it stick out a little bit on this side. Let's check the reference. Alright, so it's sticking out quite far on this side and not as far on this side, it's pretty much flush. Okay, so let's pull it out here so it's sticking out somewhat. Right, I'm just going to convert it to Edmo Poly. Alright, and let's go to Vertex. I'm just going to go to Wireframe and just select the verts on the inside side. Okay, and just drag it through. We'll figure out the other side in a second. Let's just get it uh, kind of where we want it. So I'm going to leave it sticking out quite a bit on that side. Alright, we'll go around to this side. Alright, that actually lined up pretty good there. So we can probably just leave it. Alright, so let's just round the edges over. Alright, so we go back to Polygon. Just select that one there. Go around to the other side. Control click this one. Alright, so both ends. And uh, we'll control click Vertex. And just chamfer. Let's take it down a bit. Maybe 0.15, hit apply. And we'll do uh, maybe 0.05 on the second one, and OK. Alright, we can exit edge, center the pivot point. Arc tab, fact pivot only, center object, turn it off. Alright, let's name it. I'm just going to call it uh, trigger safety. Alright, and we'll change the color. Throw our gray on there. And just add the smooth modifier to it just to be safe. Okay, so back into the modify list, down to smooth, auto smooth. Alright, so let's take a look. Alright, so we're making some progress here. I know it's really slow, but uh, we should be done with this fairly soon. Just gotta add the trigger and the hammer, and I think we're uh, pretty much uh, good to go. Okay, so let's do another save. Okay, so let's start working on the trigger piece. I'm just going to select these two uh, trigger housing pieces. Okay, and we'll go into isolation mode. Hold Q. Alright, let's jump out into the left view. Alright, and we also need to be able to see our picture there, so I'm just going to right click and unhide by name. And just unhide the blueprint. Just so we can see it here. Alright, let's take a look at the reference. Alright, the trigger's fairly simple. It shouldn't take too long, so let's just start with a box. I think that'd be the easiest way. Alright, so go to the create panel, grow box. And I'm just going to drag one out here. We'll adjust the size in, uh, in a second. Let's just get one in. Give it a little height. I'm right, just going to change the color on while I'm at it. Alright, throw our blue on there. Okay, so let's get it aligned to uh, the hole first. Alright, so let's just drag it over. And we'll look in 
the front view. Alright, so I'm just going to center the pivot on the box. Alright, hard tab, fact pivot only, center object, turn it off. Alright, I'm just going to line it up with that center edge there. Okay. Let's go into perspective, just going to hit Z. Alright, that might be okay for the width. Um, I'm going to leave a little bit of space on either side there. Alright, so let's go into the modify panel. Alright, so for the for the height, we'll just say maybe 5. Just to make it easy. Okay, and uh, let's go back into the left view. We're going to use wireframe, F3. Alright, I'm just going to convert this to edible poly. Alright, and let's uh, go to vertex. Alright, so I'm just going to grab the top four verts and just move them up into the hole. Okay, and we'll grab these guys and just kind of move them back. Alright, and we'll move these guys up just so it kind of fits our inset piece that we pushed in. Alright, and let's take one more look here. Alright, so it's fairly curved and it's got this piece sticking out of the bottom. Alright, so let's go to Edge. Alright, back into wireframe and I'm just going to select these four edges and do a connect. Alright, we'll just give it a couple of segments, maybe four, and OK. And I think we'll turbo smooth this piece. But let's just kind of shape it, so let's go back to Vertex. And I'm just going to grab these three on the center and just move them in a bit. Alright, just to try to start getting that curve. Alright, I'm just going to pull this one out a bit. Alright, just want to look at the top here. Alright, so it looks like it rolls right up into the top. Alright, so let's grab this guy up here and just pull him over. Okay, just like that. Alright, and we don't really need the back polygons on this piece, so I'm just going to go to Polygon and just drag a selection around the entire thing. Okay, and then hold down Alt and just deselect everything but the ones facing up into the hole. Alright, you can check it out in perspective. Alright, F3. Alright, so just these guys on the back inside. We don't need them, so let's just delete them. Alright, delete. Get rid of them. Okay, and let's pull that piece out of the bottom. Alright, so I'm going to go back to Edge and just grab one of these ones and we'll do a ring. Alright, I'm going to do a connect. And we'll just do uh, one segment. And I'm just going to slide it over a bit. Alright, maybe uh, 40 or so on the slide and OK. Alright, and I'm just going to grab this vert here and just kind of move it up, like that. Alright, and let's go to Polygon and grab this guy, and just extrude it. Alright, we'll back that off a bit, maybe four and a half, and OK. And let's do this in the left view. Alright, so back to Vertex, and I'm just going to kind of pull these guys over. Alright, just like that maybe. Okay, pretty simple. And uh, let's add some support edges to it. Right, we'll do that in perspective. All right, we can probably hide everything else temporarily to make it easier. So let's go uh, Alt Q. All right, so just like that, and let's uh, go to Edge and just add some support. All right, so we'll do one around here first. Grab one of those ring and connect. Alright, and we don't want to do any slide. All right, it's got fairly hard edges. Okay, so let's uh, pinch them apart quite a bit. Uh, maybe 85 or so on the pinch, and OK. Alright, and let's add a couple this way. I'm gonna grab a corner and connect. Just lower the pinch mount on these guys. Maybe uh, 60 and OK. Alright, we're going to have to add one in here. So let's uh, grab that edge, do a ring, connect. One segment, no pinch. I'm just going to slide it over a bit. All right, maybe 85 or so and OK. Alright, and then we're going to need another one across this way. So let's grab this edge here and do a ring, connect. One segment. And I'm just going to slide it down to the bottom a bit. Alright, say 80. 
negative and okay and then lastly we'll do a couple around this little end piece okay so right around there connect two segments no slide and just pinch them apart All right, and I'll do 85 or so on the pinch for those guys and okay alright so we'll put the turbo smooth on we might have to adjust these guys right here because they're pretty close together but let's see how it looks alright so we'll exit edge go into the modify list put a turbo smooth on alright two segments or two iterations and ice line display alright I'm just going to turn my edges off F4 alright so it looks uh, fairly good you can see we got a bit of a, a little crease there kinda hard to see but you can kinda see it alright so let's go back to edit poly turn our edges back on and that's just because these edges are so close together on this uh, curve okay so to fix that let's go back into the left view and zoom in here on these guys here and I'm just gonna go to vertex and just grab these ones at the top alright so all six of those and we'll put our edge constraints back on here and pull this down to edge and let's just slide these up a bit okay and we'll do the same with these guys down at the bottom alright all six and slide them down alright just to uh, give it a little bit of space in between them alright and let's see how it looks I'm just gonna hit show end result alright turn our edges off let's look in perspective I might need to still adjust it a little bit exit vertex. Alright, so it's better, but there's still a little bit of a, a wobble in there. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to the left view, back to vertex, turn off my edge constraints, just take it to none. Alright, I'm just going to grab these guys in the center, those six, and just pull them out just slightly. Okay, I think that's good enough. Okay, so we'll exit vertex. Alright. So pretty easy, pretty simple. All right, so uh, let's uh, turn our edges back on at four. Exit isolation mode. I just hit Z. Right, let's just take a look here, see if it's going to be fitting. Okay. All right, looks pretty good. And they are going to be, you know, sticking up on the inside here, these back corners, and our holes rounded over. But uh, I'm just going to leave it like that because I don't think it really matters. You'll never see it. All right, so we'll say that's cool for the trigger. Let's name it. Just gonna call it trigger and center the pivot point one more time. And just throw our gray shader on there. Alright, just like that. I think that should be uh, cool. Alright, so we'll have to start doing the hammer. Uh, we should probably save first though. So let's do that. And I think we'll do the uh, hammer pretty much the same way as we did the trigger. Let's just jump out and go into the uh, left view. Alright. We'll zoom in here. Alright, I think we can probably use the box. I'm just going to take a look at a reference. Alright, so we don't really need this one anymore. Let's just close that for now. Alright, so this one's fairly simple. If you look on this one here, this one's a little different than this one here. Alright, and I think we'll do ours more this style. Maybe a combination of the two. Alright, so let's uh, get rid of this picture. Okay, I'm just going to minimize that. Alright, so let's go to the crate panel, just grab a box, and I'm just going to uh, drag one out here. The wireframe. Right, we'll give it a little bit of height. Okay, and let's actually align it before we start shaping. Alright, so I'm just going to drag it over again on the X. And we'll do the same thing as we did with the trigger. Let's center the pivot point on it first. Alright, I'm just going to move it over and kind of center it. Right, take a look, hit Z. Alright, so it might be a little too wide. Let's uh, go into the modify panel and just lower the height down a bit. Just to make it a little thinner, let's say maybe 5.5. Uh, Okay, I'm just going to move it back over. All right. Okay, so back to the left view, and I'm just going to change the color. 
Alright, so let's convert it to edible poly. Okay, I'm just going to go to vertex and just move the top two verts down just so it uh, fits our hole a bit better. Right, like that. And let's go to edge and just grab the four side edges. And we'll do a connect. Alright, this time we'll do maybe like three segments and OK. Alright, and let's go to vertex and I'm just going to start kind of shaping it. Alright, so I'm going to grab the bottom two and just pull them in. Right, I'm just going to go just inside the hole. Alright, and then we'll grab these guys and move them over a bit. Right, do the top two at the same time, maybe. Alright, it's going to be pretty much impossible to see anything on a reference picture there, so we're just going to have to uh, guess where this stuff is. Alright, so I might do uh, that. Okay, and then let's... Uh, Go into isolation mode again, Alt Q. Okay, and we'll just get rid of the back polygons first. We don't need them, so these four. And delete. Alright, and then let's uh, maybe add a couple of edges around here. Alright, if you look on this one here, you can see there's a bit of a, an edge there. Alright, so let's uh, grab one of the corners and do a ring, and we'll do a connect. Alright, and we'll do two segments, and I'm just going to pinch them apart a bit. Maybe 60 or so on the pinch, and OK. Alright, let's go back to the left view first. I'm just going to select that polygon there. OK, and we'll jump back to the left view. Just going to right click and unhide our plane. Right, our blueprint. Alright, now let's uh, extrude this out a bit. Right, we'll back it off. Let's do maybe 6 or so, and OK. Alright, I'm just going to open up that picture there so I can see it. Alright, so I might not match the shape exactly, but I think we'll just kind of taper this together. So uh, let's go to Vertex, and I'm just going to drag the top ones down a bit. And these guys, like that. I might move the whole thing down a little bit. that. Okay, pretty simple. And we are going to turbo smooth this one too, so we're going to have to add some support in here. Alright, so let's just do that now before we go any further. Alright, so the first thing I do is just add uh, one across the front here, so let's grab one of those edges and do a ring. And we'll do a connect. Alright, this time we can do one segment, no pinch, and I'm just going to slide it over closer to the front edge. Alright, you can see it's not even here, but uh, we'll fix that in a sec. Let's just do maybe negative 80 or so on the slide and OK. And we'll jump into the left view here and just clean this up a little bit. Alright, so I'm just going to go to vertex and just kind of even these guys out. Alright, move them over a bit. I want the edge to be fairly tight when we're uh, done. Alright, so we'll kind of just go down and just straighten everything out. Right, make sure it's going to uh, smooth the same all the way down. Alright, maybe just like that. Okay, let's go back to perspective. Alright, and back to edge. Alright, so we'll need a couple on here, so let's grab this one and do a ring and a connect. Alright, we'll do two segments. No slide, and I'm just going to pinch one apart. And maybe I'll do 85 or so on the pinch, and okay. Alright, then we're going to need a couple this way, so let's grab that edge and do a ring. Connect. Two again, and I'm just going to back it off a little bit. Maybe 75 or so this time on the pinch. And OK again. Alright, and we're also going to need some this way, so let's grab that one. Ring. Connect. Alright, I might just, uh, might just leave that at 75. And we'll hit OK. Alright, and we're going to need a couple in here to hold this corner, so let's grab that guy and that guy on the other side holding control. Ring one more time and connect. Alright, and again we'll do two and I'm just going to lower the pitch amount down. All right, maybe 40 or so this time, and OK. Alright, and one more across here to hold the bottom of our extruded piece there, so let's ring this edge. OK. 
connect, and this time we'll just do one segment, no pinch, and I'm just going to slide it up to the top a bit. Alright, maybe 85, and OK. Alright, so I think that's pretty much everything we need to do. I might want to add one down here at the bottom. Alright, so let's grab that one and ring, connect. And we'll do one again, and I'm just going to slide it closer to the bottom. Alright, maybe 85, negative, and OK. Alright, so I think that's everything. Let's add a turbo smooth to this and just see if it's going to hold the shape. Alright, so we'll exit edge, go back to the modify list, down to turbo smooth, and we'll chuck one on, two iterations, and ice line display. Right, just take a quick look here. I'm just going to turn off my edges, F4. Alright, so that's not looking too bad. Alright, let's check it out in the left view, see if our curve looks uh, decent. It doesn't look too bad, it's pretty uh, smooth. Okay, smooth enough, I think. Alright, so we'll say that's good for basically the shape. Um, just going to look again at our reference. It's kind of hard to see, but it looks like this one has a little bit of a... Uh, maybe some little edges on there for grip. Alright, this one doesn't have it, I don't think. All right, so maybe we should put some little uh, bumps on there just to give it a little more detail. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Edible Poly. Turn our edges back on, F4. Alright, I'm just going to go to Edge and just grab this edge here, and we'll do a ring around this piece. Connect, and let's do no pinch, no slide, and I'm just going to do a few segments. Alright, um, maybe 10 segments, and OK. Alright, and let's chamfer these edges. Alright, so chamfer, take the amount down. Maybe 0 0.15 and OK. Alright, and let's just go to uh, Polygon. Okay, and I'm just going to go along and select every second one of these. Alright, those 10 there. Okay, and let's do an inset. So I'll open that up and just take the amount way down. Alright, maybe 0 0.04 and OK. And let's just extrude this, so extrude, local normal, I'm just going to take it down. Maybe uh, 0.25 on the extrusion height, and OK. Alright, we probably want to add a little bit of support around these guys, so let's go back to edge. Alright, I'm just going to grab an edge on the corner of each of these. Holding control, work way along. Alright, so just 10, and we'll do a ring and a connect. Alright, and we'll do two segments, and I'm just going to pinch them apart a bit. Alright, maybe 65 or so on the pinch, and OK. Alright, we might need to add a few uh, more support edges, but let's see how it looks. So I'm just going to go up here and uh, turn on show and result. Alright, turn off our edges. Take a quick look. Alright, so let's go back in. I'm just going to turn off show and result. Alright, so we're not really getting the shape we want, that's just because we don't have any support edges this way. Okay, so let's just add a few quickly. Alright, so I'm just going to grab much all these edges right here. All right, we'll do some in the center too, so let's just go along and get every one. Alright, just up to the end one here. Alright, I'm not going to do this side of it or the uh, left side of it there. Just these uh, 19, and then we'll do a ring and a connect. Alright, I'll just leave it at two segments and uh, 65 on the pinch. Alright, we're just going to have to be careful down here that these don't start crossing, else we're going to have a real problem. Alright, but I think they should be okay. Let's just see. It might take it down a little bit, just to make sure that doesn't happen. Alright, so we'll say 45 on the pinch and okay. Alright, let's turn off edge, and just hit show and result. Alright, turn off our edges, F4. 
All right, so that's holding up a little better. All right, that's more what we want, I think. Okay, so that should be fine, I think. Again, it's you know a really tiny detail, um, but it'll just give that piece a little bit more uh, you know, detail. All right, so let's throw our gray shader on there. All right, and uh, we'll center the pivot. Architab, effect pivot only, center object. Turn that off, and let's give this a name. I'm just going to call it Hammer. Alright, and let's exit isolation mode and see how it looks. Alright, so I'm just going to hit Z. Right, just take a look here. Alright, just want to check and make sure it's centered in the hole. Check that in the uh, front view. Alright, it looks pretty good. So I think I'll just leave it there. Alright, so just like that. Alright, so we're almost done. We just need to add that piece that goes up in here. Okay, so let's save before we do that.